Hi everybody, <clears throat> my name is Lindsay. I'm welcoming, I'm welcoming you to my channel. It's uh, called Shine, and the reason why is because we are the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world, and he says the light of life is within us, and we are to shine the light of life, of truth to everybody we know, so that all men can, all people can glorify God. So. Um, welcome to the channel. Today is going to be about Jesus. I really am so excited to share who Jesus is with you. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of question about who Jesus really is. Um, a lot of people have different concepts, and um, so we're going to dive into who Jesus really is. And um, I'm so in love with Jesus, and when you come to know Jesus personally, it's almost impossible not to be, not to fall so in love with him. He is so amazing, so lovely, all the, all the way around. So, um, thank you for joining, and um, let's talk about who Jesus is. So, um, many people know Jesus as... Um, you know, Jesus is part of the Christian faith, um, but if you're not familiar with the Christian faith or the Bible, um, today we're going to be going through different um, different things the Bible says about who Jesus is. So, um, let's first go dive into some scriptures that talk about who Jesus is that come from the Bible. So, um, in John 3.16, let's go ahead and read that. John 3.16 is one of the most popular um, verses in the Bible, and for good reason. It highlights who Jesus is and his purpose for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that everybody believing in him might not be destroyed but have everlasting life. Wow, that's really powerful because here it's saying... You know, Jesus is the, Jesus is the, um, Jesus is the result of God's love for us. We learn not just about Jesus in this verse, but about how God actually loves us, um, that we can have everlasting life and not be destroyed. And... It talks about, it says that he gave his only begotten son. So here we already know Jesus is God's only direct son. He is the firstborn of all creation. He's, which we'll go into other verses about that too. But we see here that Jesus is God's only son. That's, that's amazing. Jesus is God's son. His only begotten son. And through Jesus, when we believe in him, when we put faith in Jesus we gain everlasting life. So that's pretty amazing. Jesus is our Savior. Now again, if you're not too familiar with the Christian faith, um, you might not be wondering what exactly is he saving us from, which we'll go into as well. But, so, but you've already learned a lot. He's God's only Son, and He's our Savior. Um, we can find this also in Luke. The first chapter, 29 through 34, talks about God, I'm sorry, it talks about Jesus being God's son. And this is actually how he comes into the world um, to become the sacrifice for all mankind. Uh, in Colossians chapter 1, 15 through 16, we can see also that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. And if we actually go <clears throat> to... Uh, go on in those scriptures, I'm um, sorry, in those verses, we can see that he's the creator as well. There's nothing in this world that was made, I'm sorry, there's nothing in this world that wasn't made through Jesus. So God made everything through Jesus. Jesus is, um, he was from in the beginning with God and he is every, is the creator of everything. Um, so let's see in Matthew twenty-eight nineteen through twenty, 
um, we can see that Jesus is actually here with us right now in spirit and through the Holy Spirit. But in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1, we can also see that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father God as well. So where is Jesus? He's not dead anymore. He was resurrected and he's now seated at the right hand of our Father God. But he's also here living within us through Holy Spirit until the end of days. That's so wonderful to know that Jesus is never le le leaving us alone. He's always here and he's also reigning in heaven right now with God. Um, that's beautiful. Uh, Jesus is eternal. He was in the beginning and he'll always be and he is and he will always be. In Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 13, those verses give a really good um, vision of how you can see Jesus is eternal. Jesus was perfect. I mean, he is perfect. He's completely perfect and holy and sinless. Um, he, there's no sin in him. If we see 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he was, he was completely holy without sin. And all of the world's sin was put on him to take our sins away. That's pretty, that's amazing grace right there. So Jesus is sinless, he's perfect. There's nobody perfect, no, nothing, nobody like that, that's sinless and perfect like him. Um, Jesus is the king of God's kingdom. So Jesus is a king as well uh, of God's kingdom, which is not of the earth. In Colossians 1, chapter 1, thir verse 13, you see that God made Jesus his king of his kingdom. Um, and so he is our king. And 1 Peter, chapter 1, 18, 18 through 21, um, we can see that Jesus was resurrected. So that we can also be resurrected in spirit to live for God. Um, through our faith. So, Jesus is resurrected. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people that think Jesus is still dead, but he's not. And there's a lot of religious um, and great leaders that are, you know, were, were the, the subject of people's faith, but unfortunately they are no longer alive. It's really amazing and assuring to know that that our God and our King is still alive. He has resurrected and conquered death. Jesus conquered death. There's nothing that can stand against Jesus because he conquered death when he resurrected. Um, yeah, in Genesis 1.26, we see that God is talking to Jesus. He's saying, let us make man in our image. So we are made in Jesus' image too. That's pretty awesome. And um, John chapter 1 verse 1 as well is talking more about Jesus being the creator and that he was there in the beginning of all things with God and that he's one with God. So he should be worshipped alongside with God. Um, on Luke chapter 1 30 through 33 you see the message of Jesus coming into the world as son of God. And Luke chapter 2, 11 talks about Jesus being the Messiah, the, the anointed Savior. So, um, throughout the Old Testament, it talks about Jesus um, as the Messiah. The people were expecting God to bring an anointed Savior as the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior. And that's Jesus. And it's confirmed here and in many other verses as well. So, um, I actually want to read a scripture to you because we, we know all these amazing things about Jesus. He was a son of, he's the son of God. He's eternal. He's the king of God's kingdom. He's the creator. I mean, these are all magnificent things about him. But what's so beautiful is that Jesus also meets us at our level. Jesus became a human and um, he understands us 
in a way of experience because he he became human like us and so he really relates to us so we have a god that's not just a divine god that was you know holy and all this but we don't have to worry about him understanding us and meeting us even at a human level that's so beautiful so let's go ahead and read hebrews 4:15 It says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tested in all respects as we have, but without sin. Let us then approach the throne of undeserved kindness with freeness of speech, so that we may receive mercy and find undeserved kindness to help us at the right time. That's so beautiful. He sympathizes and he, 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 he understands and relates to us. And um, there, you know, what we'll learn more about Jesus in the Gospels is that he even came so humbly, not as the king, not, not presenting himself as a king that he is, but actually serving others. So he's so humble and... and, and you know, undeserved kindness. He's so graceful. Um, and then in John fifteen fifteen, Jesus even calls us his friend. He calls us a friend. So we're not even just looking at him anymore as just just a king or just a master, but or just a lord, but our actual friend. Jesus has connected and reconciled us to the Father God and revealed to us God's truth has become the mediator between man and God. So, wow, that's so precious. Um, now we are able to approach God and because of Jesus. Um, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, we can see that Jesus is the image of God. And this is just one uh, verse of many that talk about how Jesus excuse me I'm sorry um, if Jesus that Jesus is actually the image of God so when we see Jesus we are we are coming when we come to know Jesus we are coming to know who the Father God is because um, he is the exact representat representation of God Wow that's that's so awesome and in Colossians 1 13 through 20 it reveals that Jesus is the Lord of all he is exalted above all and every other name. So he is the high, highest Lord of Lords. He is to be respected and, and held holy and sacred and revered in that way. Now let's go ahead and look at what God even calls Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, 16 through 17. It says, after being baptized, Jesus immediately came up from the water and looked, the heavens were open, and and he saw God's Spirit descending like a dove and coming upon him. Look, also a voice from the heavens said, This is my Son, the Beloved, whom I have approved. So God calls Jesus his Son, and um, he is the one that God has chosen. He is the anointed one. Um, we can also look at what the apostles say about Jesus. Jesus actually, um, John the Baptist, said this is the one who takes away the sins of the world. In John chapter 1, 29-31, he's talking about Jesus as being the Savior, the Messiah that they were waiting on. And Jesus asked his apostles in Matthew chapter 16, uh, verse 14-16, through 16, Jesus asked his apostles, who do you say the Son of Man is talking about himself in? They say, you are the Son of God. You're the Son of the living God. And you're the anoint you're anointed one. You're the Messiah that has come to save us. So, more confirmation about him being our Savior. The Savior of mankind that God has given us. And him being God's Son. Um, so, now, let's go ahead and look at what Jesus actually calls himself. Um, this is pretty interesting. This is straight from, from Jesus, right? So, Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. Now, a lot of these um, we'll actually go into more in other videos, but 
just coming to know about what Jesus actually calls himself is really important to know. So Jesus called himself the Good Shepherd, the bread of life, uh, the, the vine, the, the way, the truth, and the life. And he's the door. He's the door to the kingdom of God. And um, he will be seated at the right hand of God. And he's going to come. He's going to return to the world. He's going to return. And um, he says that if you put faith in him, so you believe in Jesus, um, that he, he tells us to put faith in him. He tells us to believe in him and to believe on him. So, um, and that he calls himself the light of the world. So I want to give you some, ver uh, some scriptures to um, look over. And it's just amazing to read these. Um, you'll really get the sense of who Jesus is by reading this. So John chapter 6, 41. John 15, verse 1. John uh, chapter 1, verses 5 through 6. And John 10, 7 and 9. Mark 14, uh, verse 62. And John 8, verse 12. So those are all beautiful verses you can read about what Jesus, how Jesus calls himself. And then another beautiful, amazing um, topic to discuss about who Jesus is, is his name, his very name. Because there is so much power in his name alone. Um, and his name really does describe who he is. So we know that if you, when we read through the Bible... Um, the Old and the New Testament, that there are so many names that Jesus um, has. I mean, who else has so many names like him? These are just a few, right? So the Word of God, the Lamb of God, Emmanuel, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the Savior of the World, the Returning King, Rabbi Teacher, Son of God, the Great Physician, the Prophet, the Prince of Peace, Alpha Omega, the Great Counselor, the Great High Priest. I mean, we could go on and on. Those are just a few, and it's amazing. And then his very name, Jesus, actually means Savior. So, of course, his name is what he is and what he has done. He's come to save us. Um, and then there's a few verses we can read about how his name has power in it to heal to protect, to, um, you know, to save. So Philippians chapter 2, um, verse 9 through 11, and John chapter 1, verse 12 through 4, Acts 2, 38, Acts 4, 30, Romans 10, 13, John 14, 13, and Luke 10, 17 as well. So I actually want to go ahead and read Philippians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, because it really gives you an idea of how exalted and sacred and powerful Jesus' name is. So let's go ahead and read that. It's Philippians 2, 9. And so, let's see here. So it says, For this very reason, God exalted him, Jesus, to a superior position and kindly gave him the name that is above every other name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the ground, and every tongue should openly acknowledge Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So here we're seeing that Jesus is his name is exalted above every other name so again emphasizing on Jesus being Lord of Lord which is his power is above every other power um, and then every tongue will confess he is the Lord and every knee shall bow to him so yes Jesus in his name 
is so powerful, so amazing. Um, and his name is so lovely too. All right, let's go ahead and move into the second part of who Jesus is. So um, we we read over some amazing things about who Jesus is that the Bible says about him and his attributes. Now, what do we know about reading the New Testament, um, specifically the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? So we first we'll go over how Jesus is virgin born. So he's born of a virgin. And I think a lot of people know this, but I, I don't know how, um, I'm not sure how many people know why that's so significant, though. And I do want to go ahead and explain why. And, of course, I'll explain more in other videos um, in depth because it's kind of, if you're, especially if you're new to the Christian faith, it's kind of um, hard to understand how his, his spirit and seed differs from man's seed. Um, but we'll go ahead and discuss that in another video. Um, but I will discuss how this is a significant thing of him being virgin born. So, Jesus was actually born of a virgin, the Virgin Mary. And um, so in Luke 1, 34 and 35, um, now the angel is actually talking to Mary about how Jesus is going to come because, uh, because Mary discusses like, how can I become pregnant? Because she hadn't had, she hadn't been with a man. And that's because um, here in verse 35, a Holy Spirit will come upon you. And um, the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the one who is born will be called Holy. So, so here's where it differs from man. Because Jesus was born of a, a human mother, Mary, but he was not born of a, of a human um, father. And this is important because he was born from God's spirit. So God's spirit and God's seed, God's spirit is holy. It's completely holy and perfect. He couldn't have been born of a man's seed um, because we are, we, because of we come from Adam so we carry that sin nature if he would have been born of a man he would have been born with sin nature and then he would have have been able to save us and he would have had to die for his own sins and not been able to save himself or us but he was born from God's spirit so he was completely holy and um, he was of God he is God he's one with God so and he was not born into the sin nature so we learn more about this when we become saved we be become born again in the holy spirit kind of like jesus was conceived as a human in the holy spirit holy made holy and made righteous so it's pretty profound it's pretty cool to learn about how that is so significant of him being um, born of a virgin and that he was sinless um, when he came to earth even as a human um now we can talk about the prophets' descriptions um, throughout the Old Testament. They they uh, they actually talk about who Jesus. You know, this is this is what the prophets meant when they discussed when they talked about this. They were talking about Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. And um, as you read on, the people discussed a lot about is this is this the Messiah? Yes, this is. You know, and. And we learn about, you know, referring back to even the Old Testament, how this actually, Jesus was proved to be the Messiah. And he told, he told the Pharisees himself, you know, Moses even talked about me. How can you not believe that I am the Savior? How can you not believe in me? So we learn that Jesus was reflected in um, the Old Testament as well. So in saying that, you know, Jesus... Um, is the center of like mankind before now and after because he was always the plan from the beginning and he was he was um he was people you know they waited they were anticipating him to come his arrival and, and then he and then even now we're still waiting for his return because he's supposed to return to us and then take rightful place as sovereign. 
So that's pretty profound too. Um, and then Jesus talks about, um, going back on what we were talking about earlier, about him being um, the king of God's kingdom. Jesus talks about God's kingdom in a lot of his teachings, and that's one of his um, purposes is he taught us about God and his kingdom because that's something we didn't really understand at all um, before. <clears throat> they didn't really understand and know God, but but through Jesus, through knowing Jesus, we can come to know God and his kingdom. And uh, Jesus talks about his kingdom's not even of this world. John 18, verse 36, J Jesus talks about his, king his kingdom is not of this world. So we also belong to, since we belong to him as he is our king, we are not, we do not belong to this world. This world is um, ruled by the devil, by Satan. So actually... Our affiliation with this world is temporary. Um, and then um, I do want to talk about a few things that, you know, just a few things that you learn about Jesus through reading the Gospels as well, about what he did and, he, you know, what he did and why that pertains to even in our life right now. Um, so <clears throat> in John, in the, in the book of John, it talks about there's so much that Jesus did that even the whole world couldn't contain all of what could be written about what he did. That's marvelous. Like that's that's even hard for me to even fathom, but that's how just amazing Jesus was. I mean, and amazing how Jesus is, but all the things he did in his lifetime. So, and then I'm just going to share a few things. Um, and even the things I'm sharing to you is just mind-blowing. The power and the, the goodness that he brought while he was here and that he continues to bring. So, um, the, the what, first thing I kind of wanted to discuss was um, how Jesus traveled a lot. And he walked, and he went out, and he talked. And the reason I bring that up is because um, it's so significant that Jesus didn't wait on people to come to him. He went out, and he talked, and he found his disciples. Um, and he found his followers, and they started following him. But he, 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 he talked, and he, he, what he asks us to do, you know, shine your light. Don't, don't hide it. And I bring that up because we need to have that same attribute in our daily Christian life is to continuously share these the good news of Jesus and share the truth and shine your light and don't don't wait for people to ask or don't wait for people to come to your church. You know, go out and find people because they're not going to ask. I mean, they're not going to know and they're not going to know why they should even know about Jesus or anything and especially in this day and time because um, Christianity especially but a lot of religion itself is is looked down on or it's misconce uh, there's a lot of misconceptions and and um, people are afraid to, to speak up or to be you know they're afraid to, they're ashamed or they're afraid to talk about their faith and there's a lot of people that you know can be can be ridiculed and it's understandable why people have become timid about sharing the truth but it's so important that we do so I just wanted to point that out about how he reached out to others he went and found his sheep as he said he didn't wait for them to come find him he found us right um now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was how he talked in parables. Now, there are several reasons why Jesus talked in parables. Um, and one of those reasons was because he really, through parables, he helps people understand the spirit, life in the spirit, and God's kingdom. Because living in a human world, it was so hard for us to understand something in a spirit in a spiritual manner, if you will. So, um, he, the parables were used to really relate 
the people to um, who he who he was and God's kingdom and and help you understand how that applies to your life and I really think that's important for us again to um, to do and you know as we talk to people so that they can understand how Jesus really relates to their their personal self and their personal life not just on a spirit spiritual aspect that seems kind of hard to understand um, and there's other reasons he talked in parables and he actually talks about that um, but I just wanted to point that out as well so and then the other things that Jesus did that was pretty amazing Jesus gave so much so like I was saying earlier he came and humbled himself as a human but not only that he didn't even come as the king that he could have been because his kingdom is not of this world um, but the Israelites they they wanted his followers at least um, they wanted to make him king they even had this point wanted to make him king and he he fled from them because he didn't want he it wasn't it wasn't God's will for him to become king in this world not yet at least and so um, he didn't even, he also if you don't know he is the son of, uh, he is the seed of David and David was the king of Israel and so Jesus actually had the right to become king um, and he still didn't come into the world that way as God and as king he didn't even come in he he was born in a manger he wasn't even born in an inn he was born in a manger you know like a a animals feeding thing you know and then he served people he served them and he teaches us that we are to serve and and, and help and serve and give to each other that's just so beautiful the humility and and how he humbles himself that he even as God reaches to what who what we consider the lowly we don't ever have to feel so far away from God or ashamed or whatever because he loves us all equally and reaches to even you know the lowly he loves us all equally that's so precious and beautiful his grace and the love is just infinite it's amazing. Um, now, of course, we know that God, uh, Jesus actually performed many miracles. Um, like, he walked on water. And he, you know, turned the water into wine. And um, he calmed the storms. He, he calmed the storms, you know, when they were at sea. Um, he provided an abundance of fish when they couldn't find any. He healed people with even just his word alone. Um, he resurrected Lazarus from death. He casted out demons, even a legion of demons. He overcame temptation of the devil. And he endured torture for us and died for us. And forgave us while he was suffering and begged the Father God to forgive us while he was suffering and being mocked at and being taunted. He accomplished the will of God perfectly, conquered death, conquered the uh, power of darkness and the devil, was resurrected and ascended into heaven. I mean, that's pretty amazing to just think about those few things that he did so um, of course we know okay yeah Jesus is there's nothing he can't do <laughs> but like that's amazing um, what's all this mean though and we really get to learn more about it when we read the gospel so I do encourage you to read the gospel of Matthew Mark Luke and John and really ask Holy Spirit to help you understand more about who Jesus is but um, you know just from that alone to me it, it's like he fed people when they had nothing to eat so to me it's like Jesus will provide for you no matter what you do or don't have even with the little he'll make it a lot and he walked on water you know he defined logic he defined 
uh, I'm sorry, he defied logic, defied, you know, um, science and wh what, what we understand is possible. He can do the impossible. He controls the elements. He made it. He's a creator of all. He can, he can do anything. He calmed the storm. He can calm any trouble, any storm that we are going through. Um, he provides an abundance where there seems to be no way. He makes a way. He heals. He can heal you from anything, from any trouble, from any, any, uh, you know, damage that or any illness or anything, sickness or any disease, he has the power to heal. Don't ever think that's too much for him to do, because it's not. Um, he resurrected Lazarus. He can turn what's dead into life. He, he's a God of life. He can bring life to life, any, anything. And so if you feel like you're dead inside, if you feel like you have dreams that have died, you know what? God can re resurrect that. Um, he can cast out any evil, any um, negative, you know, or dark power that seems to have hold on you, any anything like that. He has the power to get rid of those um, those energies, those those powers, or those um, addictions, or those spirits, those bad spirits. You, he has the power over all those. They have to obey him. He um, he has the power over the devil. He's overcome the devil. So don't you ever fear any adversary. There's no adversary that can come against you. Jesus is there with you and can help you overcome any adversary that you have. Um, he endured torture for us. I mean, these are... He forgave us, and He teaches us to forgive, just as He forgave. So, He helps us to heal and let go of the bad that's happened to us, and the evil, and the, the unjust things. And, um, He has the power to forgive. So, Matthew 9, 4-6, through 6, He has the power to forgive, and that's important to realize, also because Jesus, um, there's no... There's no mistake, no sin, no um, thing that you can have done or said or done or anything. That's too much for him to forgive because he, that's the whole point of him existing and coming to, you know, become a sacrifice and die for us and then be resurrected was to conquer that sin and, and abolish it. Don't ever think that there's something too bad that you've done or that you're too far away from His grace. No, He has the power. He has the power to forgive you. And that is um, something that, you know, held me back for so long. But but um, thankfully, I learned the truth that there's nothing too bad that you've done that God can't forgive you. He, Jesus can forgive, has forgiven, actually, has forgiven all sins. It's all of them. So we're free from all sin. It's amazing. Um, and then uh, we're also going to learn about his mission as he said and as he did. So if we read uh, John 18, 37 and John chapter 6, 38 through 40. Um, Jesus talks about the purpose of the will of God. So he came to teach about the truth of God. And he, he, uh, he is the word of God. So he came to teach about... Uh, the truth of God and um, to to teach us about who God is again um, so he says if you, he reveals the Father if you see me you see the Father John 7 verse 16 and um, he is here to teach us about um, the promises of the resurrection so I, we do have life after death um, after, you know even though we'll die here in human mortal form we have the promise and hope that Jesus when he returns we will we will be able to live forever in his sovereignty and perfect happiness and peace and in life um, so w there will be a resurrection you we can read that in the other um, books of the New Testament as well but you can also see Jesus talking about that in John uh, chapter 11 25 through 26 um, what's beautiful is that Jesus actually 
teaches us that we he gives us abundance of life in john chapter 10 verse 10 um jesus gives us an abundance of life you know we're not here to i mean people say yeah the christian life is a struggle and it's not all, all happy rainbows and it's not supposed to be and you learn that more in your christian walk and in the bible but but at the same time at the very same time though it's amazing how much of an abundance Jesus brings to your life. That there's nothing you'll want, nothing you'll go without. Because he gives you an abundance. So just more than, than you can even, than you even need. That's so amazing. <laughs> um, so, and then, and then of course his teachings, like we mentioned before, were about God's kingdom. So we learn about God and we learn about his kingdom and the way of life we must live in. Uh, he teaches us about how we keep the commandments and, I mean, his His commandments by loving each other and loving God above all and with all that we are and how we must live holy and give and love one another. Um, he was the example of who we should be because we are supposed to become more Christ-like and, and, you know, imitate Jesus just as he imitates the Father. Um, so he's an, our example as well. And um, he's teaching about the warnings of this wicked world that we live in. So, um, you know, we, we know that, you know, we live in a wicked world. It's obviously ruled by um, the, you know, kingdom of darkness right now, the devil. Um, but we are warned of those things and so that we can stay abide in God's love and holiness and stay uh, safe and also that we are not going to be deceived or tempted and also that we have courage because Jesus tells us have courage I've conquered the world I've conquered he's conquered the world he's conquered the devil he's conquered death and all these things so we don't even have to worry about them even though we we do sometimes um, suffer afflictions and we live in in the midst of it all we don't have to fear it and we don't have to worry um, and then he teaches about his return um, and first Thessalonians 4 16 is also a good verse to read about that so he teaches about his return so he will return um, as our king um, and then so and we're going to go ahead and go into the third uh, part of learning who Jesus is. So this is talking about his his purpose and uh, for us and his sovereignty. So kind of what we discussed before um, about you know him being the sacrifice that God had you know God, God sacrificed him so that we didn't have to die for our own sins. So um, again, you know we'll have to talk more about this. Um, in, in other videos as well so that we can understand exactly how uh, why we needed a savior um, but Jesus is that savior so we all live in sin and you know the way the Bible teaches the wages of sin is death so the consequence would be eternal death um, but that you know because Jesus is holy he took the only the only the only um, like you can see represented in the new in the old testament about the sacrifices um that were made by the israelites with the animals um to to cover their sins well jesus was the ultimate sacrifice and he was holy and perfect and he was able to clean, clean us all from sin so um he's the ransom pretty much so ransom is the um, payment of you know a, uh, a payment of what what a cost um, and you know a debt so he was the ransom he was the payment that covered our debt um, and sin and sin nature so we can read about that in Rome, Romans uh, chapter 323 and he Ephesians 1 7 um, and I think we should read it actually Ephesians 1 7 so you can understand a little bit better how he is able to save us and this actually goes back about uh, what I was explaining 
uh, earlier about him being born um, from God's spirit and not man's seed. So Ephesians 1, 7, by means of him we have a release by ransom through the blood of that one, yes, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his undeserved kindness. And um, and we can read Romans 5, 12, because that explains it as well. That is why just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because they are all sin. Um so we see here that we all we all live in sin um so jesus seed well jesus um jesus is, was conceived in holy spirit so when we are reborn in the holy spirit with jesus then we are able to be made righteous and we no longer live in that sin nature um, and so Colossians chapter 1 13 through 20 is another um, great verse to read about Jesus's um, sacrifice and how he covered our sins as his, as the Savior in John 3:16 of course we um, read that one and that gives us reason to believe in him as a son of God and the one that God has chosen anointed to be our Savior and first John 3 8. Um, so in this we also learn which we'll discuss again we'll discuss more in other videos but um, this helps us realize that you know a lot of people that think that well if I, if I live a good life if I'm a good person and I do great things you know I have the ability to live you know you know I can go to heaven I, I you know God God will accept me and, it, and, and it'll be good and I can have eternal life but um, you know it doesn't work that way because there's nothing we can do there's not there's not a, nothing we can do enough to be good to wipe away to save ourselves there's no other name and actually if we can read that um, about Jesus' name, Acts 2.38, I think, or Acts 4.30, my bad. Um, Um, there's no other name that, there's no other name that, um, can, that we can be saved through. There it is. So it's actually Acts 4, 12. There is no salvation in anyone else, for there's no other name under heaven that has been given among men which we can be saved. So, we can't save ourselves through our good works, um, you know. We still are imperfect, and so unfortunately, that's not how you gain life. But actually, fortunately, it is because we always will sin. We can't be perfect, so fortunately, we have Jesus's righteousness that covers us. So it's only through Jesus and believing Jesus that we have eternal life and the hope of, of uh, salvation. So First Timothy two six. And Romans 3, 23 to 24, as well as Romans 6 and 20, I'm sorry, Romans 6, verse 23, these, these teach a lot about that. Um, self-righteousness is not, is not how you are going to be saved. So self you know, people that think, oh, I'm more righteous than you, that's, it doesn't even matter because we're all equal in God's eyes because he sees us through Jesus, not through ourself, our, our good, our good actions or whatever. And so Jesus teaches us um, he is the only way, the only way um, to the Father and to eternal life. Only Jesus. So, um, so again, you know, Jesus is to be, you know, treated as one with the Father. He says, John 10, 27 through 31. 
and my sheep follow me and I am the father of one so we are you know we're we're supposed to be followers of Jesus we follow him we imitate him we learn from him he's our teacher he uh, we worship him and, and, and respect him and rever him as sacred and holy just like the father um, he's a holy of holies he's to be obeyed as the Lord of all as our king as well and to be loved John 14 15 and 23 you know we are we are to love Jesus and to love him means to obey him and to do you know as he commands so to keep his commandments and abide in the father's love and that's what he tells us to do and then to believe in him to put our faith in Jesus and to proclaim him to others and, and share who Jesus is to share who he is um, as the Savior Romans 10 9 and um, and to come to know him more as Jesus as this, as a Savior Coming to know who Jesus is and who the Father God is means everlasting life. John 17, verse 3. And John 10, 27 through 31. So, these are all talking about, you know, let's read John 17, 3 actually. Because this is a, a great um, scripture to understand that it's through it's through coming to know Jesus that we gain everlasting life. So this means everlasting life coming to know you, the only true God and the one whom you sent Jesus Christ. But um, just to you know finish this out, the real the only way to truly know who Jesus is is to actually have a relationship with Jesus. And so we need to have a relationship, intimate relationship with him, not just through, you know, a religion or through what we've been told. You've learned so much about who Jesus is, what he did, what is even what his name means, the power that it holds, and, and all these amazing things about who Jesus is. But in order to gain everlasting life, to know Jesus truly, you have to have a relationship with Jesus. So I encourage you to invite Jesus into your life have a relationship a beautiful everlasting relationship with Jesus and you'll come to know him and the Father and um, and I encourage you to read uh, the Gospels Matthew Mark Luke and John and you'll learn so much about who Jesus is and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal himself and Jesus and God all as one to you um, and and really, really consider making Jesus the Savior and Lord of your life because it's the best and most important decision, truly, that you'll ever make because it's an eternal, everlasting one, an everlasting choice that will affect the rest of your eternity. And so, um, thank you so much for joining me and learning about Jesus. And please share to everybody that you know uh, so we can all learn about Jesus. Thank you and have a blessed day.